Juggernaut. I apologize for what I'm just about to subject you to. Think you've seen it all when it comes to arcade quality graphics? Think again and get ready to power up with CD Sound. Graphics and action so real, you'll never look at video games the same way again. And we're going to pause it here. We have to take a moment to appreciate the next clip. Incoming cringe moment in three, two, one. This CD player can play standard audio discs and adapt to the new CD Plus G. But brace yourself for a shot. Well, I braced myself, but I wasn't quite ready for that. Let's watch that poor kid in action again. Wait a minute. That looks like a young Joe from Game Sack. He's got the same wooden acting style too. Joe, were you a kid actor before you filled your sack? Anyway, I digress. Welcome to my top 50 PC Engine CD and Turbo Graphics CD games. This is my list. It's not by committee. It's not based upon what comments you write. This is my personal selection of my favourite games. My selection criteria is as follows. They must be CD based games. No Turbo Chip or U-Card games. They're on a different list. No Super Graphics games. Games must be playable without knowing Japanese, and they must still be fun to play today. Also, I'm grouping series of games together, so games and their sequels or games in compilations will take one spot on the list. Without further ado, let's get to it. Number 50, Jim Power. Now this game is unfinished and it's a bit of a mess, but I really enjoy it. Even though the physics are off, even though the, the controls are a bit wonky, there's just something about Jim Power that makes me keep coming back for more. I just I just really enjoy it. Number 49, Cheeky Cheeky Boys, which is an excellent conversion of a wonderful Capcom arcade game. It's got varied environments that you can kill varied enemies in. It's just a lot of fun in single player or in co-op. Number 48, Beyond Shadowgate. Hey, that rhymes, but never mind about that. This is a point and click adventure. It can be a polarizing game. Some people love it, some people hate it. Mostly because of the humor in its weird dark setting is a little off putting for some people. And there are instant deaths, but I found it fun. Number 47, Kaizu Chojin Shin Bubi Man 3. And this reminds me a lot of a mixture between Mega Man and Wonder Boy, which are both excellent series. So you combine that together with PC Engine style, chunky, beautiful graphics. Number 46, Psychic Storm, which is fun in either single player or in simultaneous two player mode. Your ship can morph into different monsters. You've got three ships to choose from. It's entertaining and it's fairly straightforward to learn to one credit clear. Number 45, Pumping World, also known as Super Buster Brothers and Pang, is a single screen action game where you have to burst all the bubbles on the screen without touching the enemies or the bubbles themselves. Sounds simple, but it's insanely addictive. Number 44, Gotsendina starts off like a regular RPG, Hero comes to save the Maiden, Except, oh, he dies, so the Maiden has to rescue herself. You play as the Maiden through these isometric, labyrinthine style levels. It's an interesting take on a tried and tested genre. Number 43, Rennie Blaster is another interesting take on a tried and tested genre. This time, the scrolling right and killing everything genre. It does this very well. There are plenty of different areas to scroll right through and plenty of things to kill. Number 42, Dragon Slayer The Legend of Heroes is a fantastic traditional Eastern RPG with a gripping storyline, beautiful audio, and not much in the way of loading times either. It's really well designed for the system. Number 41, you can double your pleasure with Cho Aniki and Ai Cho Aniki. Well, how the hell do you explain these two? They're just, they're just insane. You've got muscly wrestlers that are on a hunt for the magic protein. There's homoerotic overtones. There's weird machinery. There's weird special attacks. There are weird enemies. I don't know what the hell's going on, but what I do know is this game is a butt ton of fun, as well as its sequel. They're just, they just have to be experienced by anybody and everybody. Number 40, JB Harold Murder Club, where you can do your best Columbo impression with your trench coat and your fedora and try and solve an intricate murder mystery. JB Harold Murder Club is really well put together. It's, it's got a great story, it's got interesting characters and plenty of twists along the way. Number 39, Bakusho Yoshimoto no Shinkigeki is a comedic action platform game. It's very funny, it's very strange. Bakusho Yoshimoto no Shinkigeki doesn't use comedy to glaze over any cracks in the game. It's a solid platform experience filled with plenty of charm and added humour. 
Number 38, Iga Nindengayo. A slower, more methodical style of ninja action game. It's This is more akin to a Castlevania style game than it is a Shinobi homage. I appreciate this slower pacing and the setting. This is based in Edo Japan era with robots. Number 37, Prince of Persia, or Iran as it's known now. You have 60 minutes to escape the dungeon and rescue the princess who is going to be forced to marry an evil sultan. You do this by traversing traps and jumping over massive chasms throughout these beautifully artistically designed levels with rotoscope characters. Number 36, Flash Hiders. This is a game I'd never heard of until I started to make this video. It's a really solid fighting game. I'm surprised that it isn't better known, to be honest. The graphics are excellent, the sound design is cool, control is great, and there are lots of special moves to help you battle the opponent with. Number 35, Final Fight. Oh, I mean, I mean wait, no, no. Uh, Riot Zone, also known as Crest of Wolf in Japan. It's obviously a Final Fight ripoff, but it's an accomplished one and an entertaining one. You know exactly what you're gonna get when you pick this game up. There aren't many games in this genre available for the machine. This is probably the best one. Number 34, the Darius series. Personally, I prefer the second one, but the first game is no slouch either. They stand out from a space themed shoot em up crowd by doing things a little differently in terms of visual style, and I really appreciate that. The Darius games are games that are quite difficult at first glance, but then once you get to know the enemy patterns, you can eventually one credit clear them fairly regularly. It does take a lot of practice and a lot of effort, but Darius's gameplay encourages you to strive for perfection. Number 33, Exile and Exile Wicked Phenomenon. These are both action RPGs where the storytelling and traversing the map and the towns is done through a traditional overhead view, but when you enter the dungeons, the game transforms into a Kadash style side-scrolling action hack and slash platform game. It's really unforgiving. Both titles are very, very difficult indeed. Exile 2 is insanely hard in places, and I think this difficulty level is why the games aren't held in higher regard. Number 32, Asuka Yakonichi Pasen to Makishima Burning Fest. Oh, that's a hard one to pronounce. It took me several attempts, but this attempt at a one-on-one -on -one fighting game is very well done indeed. You can tell it's a later PC Engine CD from the quality of the visuals and the sound. Number 31, Might and Magic 3 The Isles of Terror is a dungeon crawler in the traditional western style. Uh, it's great. Um, if you like Dungeon Master, if you like the Bard's Tale, then the Might and Magic series is right up your street and this is a superb console conversion. Number 30, Forgotten Worlds, and it's a superb rendition of the arcade classic. It may not have the parallax scrolling of the arcade version, and it may have the occasional bit of sprite flicker, but it more than makes up for that with its absolutely incredible soundtrack, and the game itself remains intact. It's, it's phenomenal. It's a wonderful conversion of a wonderful game, and it should absolutely be in any TurboGrafx CD or PC eCD collection. Number 29, the Sprigan series. You can tell these are made by the same guys who did the Alesta games. Sprigan 1 is a vertically scrolling shmup and it's a superb title. It's one of the best vertically scrolling shoot em ups on any system, let alone the PC ECD. And then Sprigan 2 takes the same principles of Sprigan but changes the viewpoint to a side on shmup and it adds story elements too. Both games push the system to its limits with parallax scrolling, rotational effects, transparencies, they both look the absolute business and they play as good as they look. If I had to choose one game out of the two, I would pick the first game, but the second one is absolutely worthy of a look as well and that's why they both hit my 29 spot. Number 28, Advanced Variable Geo and much like most fighting games on the PC Engine, CD and Turbo Graphics, this is best played with a six button controller. Um, there's not a great deal to say about Advanced Variable Geo, what you see is what you get and what you see is a very cute female centric one on one fighting game 
with fluid control, smooth animation and a decent combat system. Number 27, Dungeon Master Theron's Quest is another western style dungeon crawler. I've lost track of the amount of hours I've played on Dungeon Master across various systems and various editions of the game from PC to Super Nintendo to Commodore Amiga to the PC Engine CD. The PC Engine CD version takes into consideration its controller limitations and streamlines the interface slightly to make it comfortable on joypad. Number 26, The Dynastic Hero. Essentially, this is a port of the Sega Mega Drive game, Wonder Boy 4, which is one of the stronger games in the Wonder Boy series. Of course, Wonder Boy 4 was also in my top Mega Drive games of all time list, so naturally, it would appear here as well. The gameplay is fantastic, it's got bright colourful visuals, I don't know why they called it Dynastic Hero, but what I do know is, under any name, this is well worth checking out. Number 5, Download 2, a surreal futuristic cyberpunk shoot em up. Download 2 improves upon the Hue Card original in every way. There are more intense bosses, there are more enemies on screen, there's a higher difficulty level. Download 2 is a solid shoot em up and a very unforgiving one. You've got to practice and practice. I haven't completed this one yet, maybe one day. Number 24, Strider Hiryu. I had to think long and hard before I put this in my top 50 list. Does a bad port of a great game still become a great game? Is it still worthy of being on the list? I thought about it, and yes, yes it does. The gameplay still shines through, even though there are problems with this port. And this version of the game has exclusive content, which means that, yeah, the PC Engine CD version is a must-own. Number 23, Populous The Promised Lands. This is an expansion of the God game that revolutionized and gave birth to the whole God game genre. Populous is a very simple game at its core. The idea is to build a land that your followers can live on so that they populate and they grow and you get more and more followers that give you more and more power and then you use that power to demolish other gods and other tribes. Number 22, the Valis series. Yes, all four games in this are in my 22 spot. Each game has its own strengths and weaknesses and I love them all. Uh, I found it very difficult to split out the games as to which one I preferred over the others. And that's why this whole video is, is put into series and franchises rather than individual games because I just couldn't pick which one was my favorite between Valis 2 the original and Valis 4. Valis 3 is a little bit of a letdown, uh, but it's still an amazing game. All four titles are, in my opinion, must own games for the Turbo Graphics and PC Engine CD. They are fantastic side scrolling action games with superb controls, exciting gameplay, and pretty cool visuals and sound too. Number 21, Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. Remember on my Riot Zone uh, Crest of Wolf section I said that there aren't many side-scrolling beat-em-ups available for the PC Engine CD? Double Dragon 2 is the second best one of the bunch. It even improves on the arcade original by adding better graphics along with animated cutscenes at the beginning and the end of the game. It looks a lot nicer than its arcade brethren and it sounds a lot nicer too. Number 20, Super Air Zong Rockabilly Paradise. Another cute em up. I'm a sucker for cute em ups. I absolutely love them. Uh, Super Air Zong is supposed to be the distant great 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 grandson of Bonk. And, and his shoot em up games are quite cool and they have certain similarities to the Bonk series. As in, you can transform yourself into these weird characters that give you extra power-ups, extra boosts. It's very tongue-in-cheek, it's very bright, it's very colourful, and there is a solid gameplay underneath these visual tweaks too. Yeah, you can't complain, it's Super Air Zonk's great, much like Air Zonk was on Turbo Chip. Number 19, The Art of Fighting, Ryukunoken. Uh, this is one of the greatest arcade conversions that I've seen on the PC Engine CD. 
considering the limitations of the PC Engine CD with it being an 8-bit system, converting a Neo Geo arcade game to the system and making it look this good and playing this well on a two-button controller is, is witchcraft. Um, they should be burned at the stake for this. Uh, it's even got the, the zooming in and out when your characters reach a certain distance away from each other. And the bruising on the characters' faces after you've pummeled them for a while is evident. They haven't skipped anything in this conversion. It makes you wonder how they did it. Number 18, Nexa and Nexa Special Summer Carnival 93. From first glance, you can tell this looks exactly like Superstar Soldier, and you wouldn't be far from, far off it, to be honest. It plays like Star Soldier, it looks like Star Soldier, it's got the same kind of difficulty curve as Star Soldier, and that's not a bad thing. Nexa does play like Star Soldier, um, and that's why it's so good. It feels like a natural evolution of the series. It takes all of the base ingredients of a Star Soldier game and, and just tweaks them a touch. Just enough to make it slightly different, but not too unfamiliar. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just make it much more challenging. And then Summer Carnival comes along. Summer Carnival 93 ramps up that difficulty even further and adds a few more enemies and has a few more tricks up its sleeve. Number 17, Lemmings. You can use the PC Engine mouse for this game. Yes, the mouse is compatible with Lemmings, and you use that mice to guide your little green-haired bastards to safety before they end up killing themselves in a myriad of interesting and exciting ways. Every level has its own puzzle to solve. There are over a hundred levels in the game, so there's plenty to keep you occupied. Lemmings is a classic for a reason. It never goes old, never stops getting entertaining. It's just a lot of fun. It's wonderful. Lemmings is timeless. Lemmings is life. Number 16, John Madden Duo CD Football. The PC Engine and the Turbo Graphics CD didn't have a lot in the way of sports games, and this is undoubtedly the best available uh, for any sport, any any sport at all on the system. This has got the presentation, it's got the gameplay, it's got the style. Uh, John Madden is a wonderful American football game anyway, and this CD football version just adds a couple of bells and whistles on top of an already amazing base game. Red, big thing, blue. Big thing, red. Number 15, Loom. This uh, is an interactive point and click adventure where you follow your hero, Bobbin Threadbear, on the eve of his 17th birthday as he discovers his hidden power from within and the other townsfolk they wanted to hide it from him and you go on a journey of discovery and wonder throughout this amazing interactive story it's colorful yet muted it's beautiful in its subtlety it's an interactive storybook that lets you just sit back relax focus and enjoy Number 14, Lords of Thunder, also known as Winds of Thunder, is the follow-up to the popular Gate of Thunder. It, it completely removes the visual aesthetic of Gate of Thunder. Um, it keeps the side-scrolling shooting elements, but adds vertical areas. And instead of a spaceship, you have this kind of flying knight with, with armor and four different types of weaponry. Um, there's some beautiful graphics in this, lots of neat scrolling tricks. Uh, an amazing rock soundtrack and a visual appeal that's that's not quite like any other game on the PC Engine. Um, there's something really special with the way that Lords of Thunder stroke Winds of Thunder looks and feels. Number 13, Kazekiri Ninja Action is a shinobi style game that 
oozes class from every orifice, from every, maybe not from every orifice, that sounds a bit gross, <laughs> but it's a very stylish game. There are so many just subtle effects throughout the game here. The, the animation's wonderful, there's such a freedom in the movement that you have over your character. Little details just make the, the world feel breathable and lived in and exciting and interesting. Plus, the game's pretty solid as well. It's um, it's quite challenging. You will need that freedom of movement to get your way past all of the enemies. Number 12, Downtown Niketsu Monitogari, also known as River City Ransom. Yes, that Nintendo classic was ported over to the PC Engine CD and they didn't do an awful lot with it. They improved the color palette a bit and added red book audio. Um, but they left the rest of the game untouched and that is absolutely fine and dandy with me. If it ain't broke, as I said before, don't fix it. River City Ransom Downtown Niketsu Monotagari is an amazing beat-em-up. It's the finest beat-em-up on the PC Engine CD. It's loaded with humour, it's loaded with style and panache, and it's loaded to the brim with gameplay in one or two player modes. Number 11, and quite a common appearance for Cotton. Yes, Cotton has shown up on many of my favourite games of all time lists. The PC Engine and TurboGrafx CD list will be no different because Cotton, no matter what system it's on, is a brilliant shoot 'em up. I absolutely love this game. The CD audio adds this little extra uh, je ne sais quoi to the game too, along with the animated introductions and cutscenes in between levels. Is it the best version of Cotton? Um, not certain to be honest, but it's absolutely worth putting in your collection. That I know for sure. Number 10, Ginga Fuke Densetsu Sapphire which pretty much translates as Galaxy Female Police Legend Sapphire, is a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up that has mind-blowing visual. Sapphire is, without a shadow of a doubt, the most beautiful shoot 'em up on the PC Engine CD by a country mile. It's also the most expensive PC Engine CD game you can buy, often selling for hundreds of dollars at a time. It's a lot of money, but you can definitely see that the quality is there. If you can afford to buy an original copy of Sapphire, then by all means please do. If you can't, go for a bootleg. Number 9, Ease 1 and 2. Now this is total value for money. If you can't afford Sapphire, pick up Ease 1 and 2 for about a tenth of the price. You get two games on the CD. Both RPGs are brilliant. Um, I loved Ease on the Master System. That's where I learned about Ease and the series. Uh, this PC Engine CD has better graphics than the Master System version. It has audio that's, that, that obliterates the Master System edition. Yet all of the gameplay and all of that amazing story has remained intact and has been translated faithfully for the US Turbo Graphics version as well. It's it's two RPGs that are at the top of their game for the price of one. How could it not be in my top 10 PC Engine and Turbo Graphics games? Number eight, Star Parodia, also known as Fantasy Star Soldier, is another cute em up. A vertically scrolling cute em up by NEC that allows you to play as a Turbo Graphics or a PC Engine. As you can grasp from the name, this is like a parody version of Star Soldier, much akin to Parodius is a parody of Gradius. This is the comedy version of Star Soldier. And what a game it is. I prefer it to the original Star Soldier. It's just utter joy. It's utter joy. Every level brings a smile to your face. You can't wait to see what the next level brings. Duba. 
Yes, my number seven is the four in one super CD. You get four absolutely blinding games included on this disc. You get the original Bonks Adventure, which is a joyous comedic platform game with crazy power-ups that make you do crazy things as a prehistoric cave boy. It's a wonderful game in its own right. And if you combine that with its sequel, which is Bonks Revenge, uh, which improved the gameplay even more, added brighter visuals, more crazy power-ups, more interesting things to do in crazy environments. You've got an amazing package already, and we're only two games in. There are two other games on this disc, even though you can only see three on the menu, but we'll get to that in a minute. So, you get Bonk Adventure, you get Bonk's Revenge, and you also get Gate of Thunder. Now, beforehand we saw Lords of Thunder, also known as Winds of Thunder. Um, personally, this is the original, and I prefer this original game. Uh, this game has a very good difficulty curve. It's a game that you can learn fairly easily, but you can thoroughly enjoy playing over and over and over, until you eventually one credit clear, which is one of the two main ways you can play the game. You can play score attack, or you can play one credit clear. Gates of Thunder is a brilliant game for either style. And then this brings us to the final game in the package. If you use the cheat code, you get Bomberman on the disc as well. Yes, Bomberman, the famous dynastic bomber, is on the PC Engine CD, uh, complete with a five player battle mode and a single player campaign. When you consider that there are four games on that disc, it's brilliant value for money. Number six, Rainbow Islands, and this is essentially a perfect arcade conversion. It's astounding what a great job they did with this game. Rainbow Islands is one of my favorite platform games ever. There's it's just something about it, it brings a smile to my face. Playing Rainbow Islands makes me happy. And there aren't many games that you can truly say make you feel great as you play them, even when you die. You feel wonderful playing Rainbow Islands, and there is plenty of challenge there. There's, it's not a simple game, it's not an easy game that you can close your eyes and finish without thinking about. In it's fact, the game is challenging quite strategic, strategic, believe it or not. When you kill enemies, you they along. drop gems of varying it's, colours depending it's a on rare where occurrence on screen and they I, die. I the idea of the game is PC not only to the CD the version and to get to the end of the level, but to complete the, best the colours of the, of the game rainbow available. in order. It's, if you it's complete the game by getting the rainbows in order on every level, you get a special ending. Number five, R-Type Complete. And this is the sole reason why R-Type was not on my top Turbo Graphics and PC Engine games list. Unfortunately, the Hue Card and Turbo Chip versions had bits and pieces of the game missing from the arcade original. R-Type Complete, as the name suggests, puts all of the missing stuff back into the R-Type game, making it the ultimate version for PC Engine and Turbo Graphics. Add that to the amazing audio soundtrack that you have thanks to the CD Redbook Audio, and you have a brilliant experience. This is one of the finest versions of R-Type that money can buy. In fact, it's probably only bettered by the Sony PlayStation version, which came along at a much later date. PC Engine CD, Turbo Graphics CD, R-Type Complete knocked my socks off. Number four, the Bastille series, a hex turn-based strategy game and its sequel. Uh, Bastille isn't much to look at. The audio sounds like it wouldn't be a miss out of a porn scene, but it doesn't matter because all that matters with these style of games is the gameplay and the tactics around that gameplay. Bastille pretty much locks it down perfectly with the first game in the series. However, I'm not a fan of these side-scrolling shoot-em-up sections, which are a bit jarring when you're in the midst of a strategic battle. Um, these sections feel a bit off, uh, but the rest of the game more than makes up for that. The sequel, Vastille 2, is pretty much bang on the money. Uh, Vastille 2 is another rare game that supports the PC Engine mouse. And you can use that to the best of your abilities throughout this amazing game. Rather than the, the jarring action sequences, 
The battles here are played out automatically in an isometric view. The gameplay itself adds more strategical layers on top of the existing game. You've got new enemies to fight, new areas to go into, not only in space but on planets and inside buildings also. It's a much more diverse game, um, but either of the Vastil games are worth your money. Absolutely worth checking out. They are some of the finest games of this genre that you can get across any system. Um, in fact, it's bettered only by the game that's coming up next, really. Number three, Neo Nectaris, and of course, Nectaris was the Japanese name for Military Madness. Military Madness was one of my favourite PC Engine Turbo Graphics games of all time. It was only beaten by Street Fighter 2, um, and Neo Nectaris is a very similar game to that. So Neo Nectaris is more of an evolution of the same style of game. Um, as a plus point. You also have the original Nectaris on the CD as well, so you get two games for the price of one. Personally, I prefer Neo Nectaris over the original. It just ramps everything up that little bit. Better graphics, better sound, better strategy, more weapon options, more vehicle options. Um, this Hex strategy game is the cream of the crop. There is a bit of Japanese text, but you will learn it very quickly. Number two, Garu Densetsu 2 and Garu Densetsu Special. Holy crap. Are we really looking at a PC Engine CD game right now? Can you just, just look at how big those sprites are, how smooth they run. Listen to that audio. Look at how freaking cool this is. It's a Neo Geo game ported wonderfully to an 8-bit system. It's phenomenal. This is more impressive than Street Fighter 2 was on the Hucard PC Engine. This is just phenomenal. It should not be technically possible. Hats off to the guys. How they figured this out, I haven't got a clue. And not only is it a technical feat, but it plays damn well too. Fatal Fury Special, or Fatal Fury 2 as it's known in the West, was a... Um, brilliant fighting game it was second fiddle to street fighter but not by a great deal and this is ported amazingly well here we are then our number one pick and you've probably guessed it already it's it's a no-brainer essentially i'm surprised if it's not number one on anybody's list because it stands head and shoulders above the crowd it is of course Akuma Ju Dracula Chino Rondo, also known as Castlevania Rondo of Blood Dracula X. Everyone who has a CD based PC Engine and Turbo Graphics knows about this game. Everything that's wonderful about it has been said a million times over. Let me just reiterate it though the graphics are phenomenal, the audio is phenomenal, the gameplay is phenomenal, it's addictive as all hell, it is the best game on the PC Engine CD by a country mile in my opinion and now I'm just going to shut up and let you enjoy the game in action. <laughs> So there we have it, my top 15 Turbo Graphics CD and PC Engine CD games. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, then hit that subscribe button and check out my other videos. If you want to be notified when I do new videos, hit the bell end that comes up on the screen when you subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.